Let's go ahead and dive right in to the second module of my series. The first one we covered all the certification, how to get ready, prepared, things like that. But this is the real first part of our certification exam rapid training. Implement information protection. Again, as I mentioned in the first video, big, huge part, 35 to 40 percent. There's four major subsections. Let's just talk about those real quick. First one is create and manage sensitive information types. The second one is create and manage trainable classifiers. The third one, which has a lot of sub bullets, if I was gonna hit one area, that just got a lot of content here, is implement and manage sensitivity labels. I found lots of resources and links. Again, on the study guide, you see at the lower right-hand corner, aka.ms slash sc-400 study guide. I did a pretty good job at finding links, uh, in particular on that k.ms slash se-400 on the exam objectives page. There's a lot of those. We talked about the uh, training modules in there, and there were a lot of hits there. So some of those will say learn in my links, but that's a hot topic. Implement and manage sensitivity labels, the biggest part of this. And then finally, small part, only a couple bullet items plan and implement encryption for email messages. And I looked pretty long and hard and I can only find a couple articles that looked like good hits. So I went and spent a lot of time, read those, dive down, I'll give the highlights. If it still doesn't stick, go do some more research as I talked about in the last one. But that's the breakdown for this section. So the first one, create and manage sensitive information types. So to manage sensitive information types, the organization you're working with must have a subscription, such as Office 365 Enterprise, that includes DLP or data loss prevention. You also must have global admin or compliance admin permissions to create, test, and deploy a custom sensitive information type through the UI or user interface. And there's two ways to create a new sensitive information type. You can create it from scratch where you fully define all elements, or you can copy and modify an existing sensitive information type. Such custom sensitive information types meet the business needs for many types of organizations. And again, we talked about in the YouTube videos, you might get a little more information about that. But what if you wanted to create a custom sensitive information type also known as SIT, that uses exact data values instead of one based on generic patterns. With exact data match or EDM based classification, you can create a custom sensitive information type that's designed to be dynamic and easily refreshed, be more scalable, result in fewer false positives, work with structured sensitive data, handle sensitive information more securely, and can be used with several Microsoft Cloud services. So what does exactly that mean, several Microsoft Cloud services? Well, we have Azure, we have M365, we have Intune, et cetera. So you can create custom sensitive information types by using PowerShell and exact data match capabilities, the EDM that we talked about. In the Security Compliance Center, document fingerprinting makes it easier for you to protect this information by identifying standard forms that are used throughout your organization. Document fingerprinting is a data loss prevention feature that converts a standard form into a sensitive information type, which you can use in the rules of your DLP or data loss prevention policies. For example, you can create a document fingerprint based on a blank patent template and then create a DLP policy that detects and blocks all outgoing patent templates with sensitive content filled in. Optionally, you can set up policy tips to notify senders that they might be sending sensitive information and the sender should verify that the recipients are qualified to receive the patents. This process works with any text-based forms used within an organization. Note that you can currently create a document fingerprint only by using PowerShell in the Security and Compliance Center. So make sure to check out this link in the blog to review the PowerShell commandlets because for this type of exam, you know, creating and implementing is always a possibility. 
Data loss prevention can identify, monitor, and protect your sensitive items. Identifying sensitive items sometimes requires looking for keywords, particularly when identifying generic content, such as healthcare-related communication or inappropriate or explicit language. That never happens. Although you can create keyword lists in sensitive information types, keyword lists are limited in size and require modifying XML to create or edit them. There is a limit of 50 keyword dictionary-based sensitive information types that can be created per tenant. You can create a keyword dictionary using the Security and Compliance Center. When you need to create a large dictionary exported from some other source, you must first connect to Security and Compliance Center PowerShell. In this case, you must copy the keywords into a text file and make sure that each keyword is on a separate line and save the file with Unicode encoding. Then you read the file into a variable as shown and finally run the new-dlp keyboard dictionary command um, also shown on the slide there for you. Create trainable classifiers. Classifying and labeling content so they can be protected and handled properly is the starting place for the information protection discipline. Microsoft 365 has three ways to classify content. Manually with automated pattern matching and using classifiers. The manual method requires human judgment and action. An admin may either use the pre-existing labels and sensitive information types or create their own and then publish them. Users and admins apply them to content as they encounter it. Automated pattern matching can work by a query language patterns or exact strings. And classifiers are well suited to content that isn't easily identified by either the manual or automated pattern matching methods. This method of classification is more about training a classifier to identify an item based on what the item is not by the elements that are in the item or pattern matching. A classifier learns how to identify a type of content by looking at hundreds of examples of the content you're interested in classifying. You start by feeding it examples that are definitely in the category. Once it processes those, you test it by giving it a mix of both matching and non-matching examples. The classifier then makes predictions as to whether any given item falls into the category you're building. You then confirm its results, sorting out the true positives, true negatives, false positives, and false negatives to help increase the accuracy of its predictions. You can help improve the accuracy of all custom classifiers and some pre-trained classifiers by providing them with feedback on the accuracy of the classification that they perform. Note the workflow here and click on the link to understand the workflow better. Again, you can find that link on the study guide at aka.ms slash sc-400 study guide. Implement and manage sensitivity labels. In addition to using sensitivity labels to classify and protect documents and emails, you can also use sensitivity labels to protect content in the following types of containers. Microsoft Teams sites, Microsoft 365 groups, formerly known as Office 365 groups, and SharePoint sites. This enables lifecycle management of content within different types of containers of M365. Containers where labels can be published include, just what we said, M365 groups, Microsoft Teams, Yammer communities, and SharePoint sites. There are many ways to apply a label to a group and SharePoint site. You can use creation wizard of a group or SharePoint site. You can use the SharePoint admin center for existing ones. There's a Microsoft Teams admin center also. You can use Azure portal or PowerShell. After sensitivity labels are enabled for containers, you can then configure protection settings for groups and sites in the sensitivity labeling wizard. Until sensitivity labels are enabled for containers, the settings are visible in the wizard, but you can't configure them. As a best practice, don't change the site and group settings for a sensitivity label after the label has been applied to teams, groups, or sites. If you do, Remember to wait 24 hours for the changes to replicate to all containers 
that the label have applied. The installation and configuration of the unified labeling scanner is done from the AIP service PowerShell module on a server that will act as the unified labeling scanner in an environment. After fulfilling the requirements, like service accounts and a SQL Server instance, it's possible to install the unified labeling within the PowerShell command shown. The configuration for the scanner is done in the Azure portal. The unified labeling scanner does not scan and protect in real time. The crawler runs a cycle and repeats. Protection and restrictions. Users can apply just one label at a time for each document or email. When you label an email message that has attachments, the attachments don't inherit the label with a one exception. The attachment is an office document with a label that doesn't apply encryption and the label you apply to the email message applies encryption. In this case, the emailed office document inherits the email's label with its encryption settings. Otherwise, if the attachments have a label, they keep their originally applied label. If the attachments are encrypted without a label, the encryption remains, but they aren't labeled. If the attachments don't have a label, they remain unlabeled. There are sensitivity label templates. These templates have their own restrictions and are typically protection templates, like the default ones, encrypt only and do not forward, which can be selected by the user. In this case, there are restrictions coming with the email and one with a file that's part of the email. The email is only the container of the files that may have their own protection configuration. When a file is protected with a sensitivity label, the protection is sensitive at the file level, even if the file storage location changes or is shared via email or other sharing tools, the file remains protected. Office 365 Message Encryption, or also known as OME. Once you've implemented your tenant encryption strategy, Office 365 Message Encryption can be implemented. To provide the best user experience, administrators should review their tenant settings for Information Rights Management, or IRM, features and OME settings before activating the encryption system for all users. OME is managed via configuration objects, or more precisely, templates, which can be assigned and referenced. The default template for all users is named OME Configuration, and any setting done in this configuration is applied to all users. While the basic Office 365 message encryption allows only a single template, Office 365 Advanced Message Encryption provides more flexibility with multiple branding templates for different purposes. Office 365 Message and Encryption allows you to use multiple templates for email messages and configure an expiration time for unprotected messages. Use templates to fulfill several use cases such as individual department templates, for example, finance, sales, and so on. Templates for different geographical regions or countries. If you want to allow emails to be revoked, if you want emails to be sent to external recipients that expire after a specified number of days. Once you've created the templates, you can apply them to encrypted emails by using Exchange Mail Flow rules. If you have Office 365 Advanced Message Encryption, you can revoke any email that you've branded by using these templates. To click and remove new templates, the PowerShell command lets new dash OME configuration and remove dash OME configuration are to be used. 